Welcome back Spartans! Cybersecurity is a broad field with many moving parts, but there are certain skills that I consider quite important. In this video I'm going to share with you 10 skills you need to stay ahead of the competition. Let's dive in! Skill number one is, non-surprisingly, programming. If you follow my channel, you know that programming is one of the things that I advocate for the most. It is important. In fact, it's quite important, because programming underpins everything in tech and cybersecurity. If you understand programming, you will understand most tech much more easily. You will also be able to automate most of your tasks or build tools that can help you and your team. And if you are wondering which programming languages you should learn, I have a video just for that, so check it out. Skill number two is APIs. APIs are an extension of skill number one because you are going to use programming to query and work with them. APIs are everywhere. Your favorite operating system has an API, your smartphone has an API, and your favorite cloud provider also has an API. APIs are interfaces that allow different products, services, and tools to interact and exchange information. For example, you can use Python and the VirusTotal API to do a mass search of domains and get a verdict for each of them. In fact, I have a video where I demonstrate how to use Python and the VirusTotal API to analyze the list of domains. Go check it out so you can understand the importance of this timeless technology. Skill number three is probably my favorite, infrastructure as code. Just because I'm a hardcore nerd when it comes to automation. Before infrastructure as code, you had to manually spin up infrastructure with servers, databases, etc. Or rely on a bunch of hacky scripts to get the job done. This approach worked, but wasn't scalable, and there was no sense of state for the infrastructure. Also, error handling was quite questionable. Infrastructure as code allows you to define a full-blown infrastructure using code, which makes the process much more efficient and scalable. Examples of infrastructure as code tools include Terraform, CloudFormation, and Bicep. Skill number four, identity and access management, or IAM. In cybersecurity, one of the biggest challenges is ensuring that the right people have the right access to the right resources at the right time. Back in the day, companies kept their servers in in-house data centers or managed a small fleet of devices. Enforcing access control at the time was much easier. Nowadays, any company worth its salt uses one or more cloud providers and allows employees to work from anywhere. And this is where IAM, or Identity and Access Management, comes in. Without proper IAM, data breaches, insider threats, and misuse of sensitive information are almost inevitable. Examples of IAM technologies include Okta, Ot0, and AWS IAM. All of these products generate logs that can be used to create alerts or searched to scope out potential incidents. Skill number five, Kubernetes, containers, and virtualization. As companies move to the cloud and deploy complex networks of microservices, the need for rapid scaling, flexibility, and isolation becomes critical. This is where Kubernetes, containers, and virtualization come into play. Now let's leave aside the security aspect of these three technologies and let's focus on their applicability. Knowing how to use Kubernetes and containers to deploy your own applications, for instance, your automation tools, will help you stand out. After all, if many cybersecurity professionals tend to overlook programming, how many do you think are able to use these technologies? Just like APIs, virtualization is widely used today, from your personal device to cloud providers. One of the most common uses of virtualization for security professionals is malware analysis and threat research, using products like VMware and VirtualBox. Skill number six, the cloud, which hardly needs an introduction. The cloud is almost like AI these days, and everyone is either using it or moving towards it in some capacity. There are a few reasons why I believe understanding how the cloud works and how to use it is essential. The first reason is that beyond the specific services of each provider, the underlying concepts and architecture are quite similar across providers. This means that once you master one, it's not so difficult to learn the others. The second reason is that, depending on the provider, most low-level details of the infrastructure are abstracted. You may come across people describing cloud providers as more or less opinionated. And the more opinionated a provider is, the more abstracted their infrastructure tends to be. Out of the box, cloud providers restrict access to most actions and resources for non-admin users. This means that by default, 
cloud providers and cloud infrastructure are on average much more secure when compared to in-house data centers. And the last reason is that cloud is automation on steroids. If you need to scale a tool or framework across multiple machines or containers with 24-7 availability, look no further. Personally, I love the combination of cloud and infrastructure as code because it is a dream come true for automation enthusiasts like me. Skill number seven, data searching. There is no shortage of data these days. Network traffic logs, IAM logs, EDR logs, Kubernetes logs, etc. The real challenge now is how do we take advantage of this data? How do we process, aggregate and search through it? This is where log management solutions like Kibana and Splunk come into play. On top of these solutions, you may have SIMs, security information and event management systems that take logs in a processed form and generate security alerts. Examples of SIMs include Sumo Logic and Phantom. Different log management solutions have different search languages, but most follow a similar logic. Log searching typically follows three steps. Step number one, you start with an index or a data source. In step number two, you filter out the necessary data using specific conditions. And in step number three, you aggregate the data and display the results. Log management systems and SIMs are fundamental to any tech company, as log searching can be used for both scoping security incidents and troubleshooting applications. Skill number eight, Unix and terminals. Before I entered university, I had used most of the Windows versions you can think of. Windows was my thing and Linux seemed like the kind of thing that only a nerd living in a basement would use. Fast forward to today and I would not touch a Windows with a 10 foot pole. While you should be comfortable using any operating system, I highly recommend that you learn how to use a flavor of Unix, be it Linux or OS X. You should also get familiar with using a terminal. Even though terminals are not pretty, they are incredibly important if you want to become a cybersecurity professional worth its salt. Oh, and by the way, have I told you that I have a mini series on how to use a Linux terminal? As usually, I highly recommend that you check it out. Skill number nine, open source intelligence or OSINT. Part of being a cybersecurity professional is knowing how to use the internet to find information. I have mentioned before VirusTotal as a place to search for IPs, domains, ashes, and more. However, there are many other platforms where you can find malicious indicators, such as GitHub repositories and public APIs. You can also investigate websites, domains, and infrastructures using services like Shodan, Census, and Google Docs. Open source intelligence works both ways. It can be used by defenders to investigate indicators and track threat actors activities, but it can also be used by red teamers, pen testers and real attackers to find entry points and vulnerabilities. Skill number 10 is, non surprisingly, artificial intelligence. I'm AI with the brains. We will often see AI built into security products to help with better detections and fewer false positives. But it is also showing up as co-pilots, which are AI assistants that speed up coding or even help you search through log management systems. These assistants can pull data, make connections and save you a ton of time. Honestly, I use AI all the time to clean up reports and whip up simple code for my automation tools. Going forward, AI is something that you should definitely add to your toolbox. It will level up your skills and cut down on all the boring and repetitive stuff. And that's all Spartans. In this video, I have shared 10 skills you need as a cybersecurity professional. While not all of them are mandatory, they are definitely worth learning because when combined, they will help you become a top performer in the field. Until next time, stay safe, stay paranoid.